Hi, everybody. My name is David, and I'm a musician and a music producer. And as I've transitioned from the rock bands of my youth to a more production and media composition-based setup, I've relied on software to fill in a lot of the blanks for me. The first piece of software that everyone needs is a digital audio workstation. And after you get comfortable with your digital audio workstation, whether that's Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase or Ableton or whatever it is you use, the next thing you'll want in your arsenal is a bunch of virtual instruments. Now, most DAWs come with several instruments included that are great, but you'll often find yourself looking for something more. And from what I've seen, one of the best and most complete virtual instrument packages that you can buy on the market today is Complete 11, or in my case, Complete 11 Ultimate, which has even more instruments. Now, there are two types of instruments that come with Complete 11. There are the samplers, battery and contact, which play back samples. Complete 11 Ultimate comes with about 500 gigabytes or half a terabyte of samples. So basically every instrument you could possibly dream of is sampled. And if you look at the higher end sample library companies out there, most of them produce libraries specifically for contact. So their sample libraries will be played back through the contact sampler instrument. So it's a good thing to have, but that's not what this video is about. You see, the other type of instrument that comes with Complete 11 Ultimate is the synthesizer. And there are four main synthesizers that come with Complete. FM8 is a frequency modulation synthesizer. Absinthe is great for soaring cinematic stuff. Reactor is a modular synthesizer, basically the software equivalent of Hans Zimmer's wall. And then there is what is perhaps Native Instruments' most well-known and beloved synthesizer, Massive. And that's what we're gonna take a look at today. So let's do it. Now, I think Massive will always be associated with the music of the early 2010s because it was popular amongst producers back then like Diplo and Skrillex, especially in dubstep, because it can create some pretty awesome evolving dubstep style bass lines and searing leads. But I think it's wrong to think of Massive just as the dubstep synth. It is fantastic and it's been heard on countless productions through the years because A, it's easy to use, B, it's easy to perform with, and C, it just sounds great. So let's take a look at Massive, and if you guys don't know the basics of synthesis, you might wanna check out my Retrolog review and tutorial because I cover a lot of that in that tutorial, so I'll leave a link for it up in one of these corners. But let's get into Massive for now. When you start off with the synthesizer, the first thing that anyone should really do is probably play around with presets just to sort of get their lay of the land. And the way you do that in Massive, and here it is, and I'm using it as the VST in my sequencer Cubase, but you can use it as a standalone application as well. I just always like to use any instrument in my sequencer in case I start screwing around and I need to record it. But if you want to load a preset in Massive, the best place to go is to the browser. And you have your bank names. I have a custom bank and then all the factory material. And you can choose what type of instrument you want. So like a plucked strings, maybe a koto, koto sin. Uh, and you can get, you know, whatever you want, synth pads here, deep pads, uh, heartbreak, that sounds pretty good. Cool. So if you go to the browser and you mess around with the presets, I think that you'll get a very good appreciation and understanding of what Massive is capable of. And that's a great place to start, but at some point you're going to wanna to use the instrument to make your own sounds. And that's what we're gonna to cover today. So in order to do that, we need to go to the synth tab and I'll go to this file and hit new sound. And this is the initial patch. So Massive is a wavetable synth and most synths or early synths, they would have a waveform be your oscillator, and oscillator is what generates sounds. So if you think of a sine wave, that would be your oscillator, or a square wave. A wavetable is essentially that, but it stacks waves on top of each other. So this right here is saw wave, square wave, square saw one. So this is a pure saw wave. And if I move the wavetable all the way to the back, we have a pure square wave. 
So if we change the wavetable position, we'll get a combination of the two. And that's a good thing to know. Now, in Massive, of course, you have all sorts of wavetables to choose from, and that's what makes it such a diverse and complex instrument that you could really spend days, months, weeks mastering. Uh, but just so you know, that's what a wavetable is, and that's how Massive generates its sound. Massive has four ways of generating noise. There's the three oscillators, and then there's the noise section. Uh, but I think what's very interesting about Massive, if we go back to the browser, you'll see these controls. And these macro controls are awesome, and this is where Massive really separates the men from the boys in terms of control. So I can assign this to my mod wheel or whatever, um, just by clicking mod wheel, and it's vibrato. And that's fine, but what I really love is, let's say I take this off, I assign two to my mod wheel. Uh, the awesome thing about Massive in terms of performance controls is here's my macro controls down here. This is what we saw on this uh, bar right here, is that I can take two, which is my mod wheel, and I can apply it to this filter here. And let's add a filter real quick. So. So with synths, there's always like a range of cutoff that's good and a range of cutoff that you don't want. Because if you go too low, you can't hear it. And if you go too high, it's harsh. So if you want the macro to work within just that area, all you have to do is drag, all you have to do is drag your number here and it'll work within that area. And as you know, I mapped this to the mod wheel. So let's try it. And that is the key to Massive's power. You can define ranges, and you can do that for the four envelope filters, the four LFOs, if you so choose them, or in this section, you can change the LFO to a performance tab or a step sequencer tab. So that is where Massive gets its infinite level of scalability, these dynamic, altering, changing pad sounds. So if we wanted to assign an envelope to the filter, we can you know, change our AD, SR, and then we take this envelope and we apply it to the filter, but we just apply it to So that's a, it's kind of amazing what you can do since you can basically alter any parameter. We can apply the same envelope to the wavetable position. Any parameter that has a box under it, you can apply any of these parameters too. And that is awesome. And that's how you get these crazy massive patches that are incredible. And it's important at this point to talk about routing just because routing is very important and massive. What you see here is you have the amp, the output of the oscillator, and this is the level you'll send to filter one, the level you'll send to filter two. Then when you go into the filter, you can either run it in serial at top, that means that all the signal goes into filter one and then gets passed down to filter two, or in parallel, which means that an equal amount gets sent to filter one and filter two directly from the oscillator. That's important to know, this is your filter level here. So if we do a high pass, uh, this is the difference between parallel and serial. You see, because it's already passed through filter one. And then the last thing I'd like to talk about is your signal flow, which is actually very neatly lined out in Massive for you in these tabs. So as you see, you, you do have two insert effects and two regular effects. Now these effects exist at the end of the amp. So it's basically like an effects you put on the whole signal chain, but there's also these insert effects, and if you want to know where they are in the chain, you actually get to assign them yourself. So you could have it be after the oscillator, but before the filter, after the filter, uh, or after both filters before it enters the amp section. And so that's awesome. That flexibility is awesome. This feedback takes a clean uh, part and feeds it back into an oscillator. So that's nice because you can add stuff to your signal. And then finally, there's the bypass module. So one of these oscillators will be bypassed and it'll bypass through all the master effects and through all the filters. And for that, this is oscillator three. So you can hear that's the 
uh, bypass signal of this oscillator three. So you can bypass all the effects, all the filters, anything that you add to it, and have that oscillator go straight through to the end because this B is selected here. So this has been my whirlwind tour of everything that you need to know to get started in Massive, start making your own sounds. Just, you're gonna have to play around with the wavetables, you're gonna have to play around with the different filters, and you're gonna have to play around with the different modulation that this uh, incredible program affords you because it's gonna take time. Uh, try your macro controls out, you know, assign different parameters to those, and you'll be amazed what you can make with this awesome program. Yes, it's about 10 years old for a synth, but it's still as relevant today as it was the day it was released. So I hope you all have found this tutorial enjoyable. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe, and take care of yourselves, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.